Hi everybody, it is July 14, 2019. Well, I want to thank my subscriber for sending this Facebook page along. It is a resource for uh, Tropical Storm Barry, but take a look at this sky. Yeah, no filter. This is crazy. Look at that color. I believe this was in Louisiana. Uh, look at this guy. Wow. Doesn't it look like, well, you got some frequencies that are shooting through this uh, aerosolized sky. And I clicked on it hoping that it would get bigger, but it didn't. You can come over, click on the link, you can take a look at it yourself. But no, no filter because others were capturing this purple sky. Oh, here is another fabulous aerosolized sky with frequencies shooting through it. Here is another capture of a very bizarre looking sky. Up oh, here's another one. And more. We had a purple sky in Abbeville. Uh, is this Louisiana? Lights are out in New Iberia. Look at this guy. Okay, what is going on here? What is going on? Well, NASA NASA was going to paint the sky, and this was, I don't know how long ago, uh, uh, 2015. NASA experiment is going to light up the sky with beautifully colored clouds tonight. Yeah. How did NASA do it? Well, with different payloads of a mix of barium and strontium creating a cloud with a mixture of blue, green, red color. Uh, here's an example of barium release provided by NASA. Let's just click on the link and see. Tracers of clouds. Blue, uh, red at night. It's bright red. Wow, lithium. Lithium, no kidding. Barium cloud ionizes quickly when exposed to sunlight and has a purple-red color. The technique is limited to local time observations near sunset or sunrise. Uh, the cloud in the upper left-hand part of the image is due to a barium release. The purple-red part is the ionized component, which has become elongated along the Earth's magnetic field lines. The purple-blue that surrounds the red ionized barium is a combination of the neutral barium and strontium. Yes, yes, what they are spraying in our sky is no doubt the reason for our lovely colors that we see. Yeah, aluminum, how long? Another tracer shot from a launch using lithium vapor and trimethyl methanol aluminum. You get this. So, sodium, uh, you get this yellow gold, um, barium green, strontium, red, copper, blue, titanium, white. So, it's not a surprise to me, and, well, I kind of like, you know, those beautiful natural sunsets as opposed to these artificial colors that people actually think are natural sunsets. But 
I also want to tell you that PARP, PARP can create an artificial ionosphere, bullseye in the sky, glowing dots, and it can create artificial auroras. So, HARP, results of HARP experiments. They can create lights in the sky that are similar to auroras. The glowing curtains of light that naturally appear in the polar skies when electrons and other charged particles pour down from Earth's protective magnetosphere into the upper atmosphere. There, at an altitude of about 250 kilometers, the charged particles collide with molecules of oxygen and nitrogen and make them emit light similar to the process inside a fluorescent light bulb. PARP can accelerate electrons in the atmosphere, increasing the energy of the collisions and create a glow. Uh, and HARP can create full-scale artificial auroras that are visible to the naked eye. HARP managed to induce a strange bullseye pattern in the night sky instead of the expected fuzzy donut-shaped blob in one of these HARP experiments. There was a surprising irregular luminescent bands. Luminescent bands radiated out from the center of the bullseye. Energy sent skywards from the HARP antenna array would trigger these odd shapes. They determined that the areas of the bullseye from strain with strange light patterns were in regions of denser, partially ionized gas in the atmosphere. Dense patches of plasma could be gas that was ionized by the HARP emissions. And the really exciting part was not that the sky was lighting up, but an artificial piece of the ionosphere was created. An artificial ionosphere. The novelty is not seeing the aurora. It's the fact that we can actually create enough high energy electrons to form plasma. So, a layer of artificial plasma that could reflect communications, hmm, bouncing them further around the globe without losing power, instead of depending entirely on the natural ionosphere to redirect radio waves or shortwave broadcasts, we are now getting the capability that we can actually produce our own little ionosphere. So, back when I was living in Great Barrington, I posted a video on my first Kafka Winston World channel it was a it was a military document and in that military document it said that due to the artificial creation of plasma our military would never lose communications we would but our military they able to create these artificial plasmas, they will always have the ability to communicate because it's Wi-Fi, essentially, what they are able to create with this artificial plasma, artificial ionosphere. They won't tell us that, but yeah, now they can have radio or shortwave broadcasts, no problem. Um, so, yeah, when you see these colors, you... I think harp, I think um, all of the um, aerosols that are in the atmosphere already, our atmosphere is pretty much ionized, so 
That is why we're seeing all of these different colors. Now I understand that there are channels out there that are saying, oh, this technology doesn't exist. They, they're fooling us with this technology because all of what we are seeing is like a natural plasma event that, you know, suddenly I guess the earth is just going to be fried or I don't know. I, I look, they have the technology and when people dismiss this technology and then start talking about, you know, other causes, I have a really hard time with that. So, yeah. Uh, well, we have seen a tremendous amount of frequencies in use for this tropical storm, Barry, that amazingly, well, it just never formed into anything remotely close. Uh, the radar and satellite. It's frightening to see how many Americans just buy the bullshit over and over and over again. Okay, so, uh, yeah, they can create shapes, they can create perfect bullseyes, they can create an awful lot. So, when we see things in the sky, well, I don't know about you, but I go to, huh, technology that man is using. The river going backwards. This, I, I've been sent the link, um, BP Earthwatch was sent a video of Pearl River going backwards. Well, uh, I believe the originator is Catherine Justice and flowing backwards Pearl River at Pearlington, Mississippi near Slidell, Slidell, Louisiana. What's going on? And indeed it is going backwards because it should be going in the opposite direction. It's going north instead of south. So, can harp do this? Yes. Can frequencies do this? Yes. Yes. See, I don't know if that's on the surface. She said she doesn't know if it's on the surface or if, you know, the, the river is literally going, uh, well, just turned around, going in the opposite direction. This is how powerful these frequencies are. Yeah, they can literally collapse the atmosphere. They can shift the magnetic core. They can reverse rivers. And this is just more, more evidence, as far as I'm concerned, that those frequencies emitted in this area are off the charts. But I also want you to see the total precipitable water, the MIMIC map. Why do we have a square here? We should not have a square here. The frequencies are not just coming from, you know, Doppler radar and uh, coming from satellites, coming from uh, HARP itself, it could be. But this is not how the precipitable waters should look. Tremendous frequencies going through. Well, here's a shot that went through Mexico, through Texas. You can see the frequencies right in the Gulf of Mexico. 
And that's, that is a shot. It may be an extremely low frequency shot. But all of these squares that you are seeing in the precipitable water, this square, you d the, the, look, it should be smooth. We're not seeing smooth. We're seeing a lot of frequencies taking place. Can these frequencies actually affect rivers? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you see these very defined lines. Yes, they are using a tremendous amount of uh, artificially induced electromagnetic frequencies that are causing a tremendous amount of disturbance. So Hurricane Barry spares New Orleans. Wow. Well, it did. Actually, they're out partying on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. And I just listened to an update on Lady Cortez. She's saying that Baton Rouge now they have lessened the amount of rain that Baton Rouge will get. Uh, it's still, you know, we're not going to know until like after Tuesday, frankly, you know, what the damage is really going to be. But New Orleans, uh, the, the entire days and days and days focusing on New Orleans, and this is New Orleans spared entirely? Wow. Well, let's listen to this broadcast. Officials here in Plaquemines Parish say when you're battling Mother Nature, you're likely to lose. Since the levee gave way here, the water's been rising, and it hasn't stopped yet. Residents in Myrtle Grove trapped when a levee failed here today. This is the main road, and the trees are the levee. The Wilkerson Canal flooding fast and furious in Plaquemines Parish. This is a neighbor's downstairs room. Stranded tonight, about a dozen homeowners who ignored mandatory evacuation orders, like Warren and Gail Lawrence. We elected to stay, and we know there was a possibility of losing all our uh, utilities. I have uh, four dogs and one cat, which is very hard to leave. Federal and state officials say while that one smaller levee on the canal failed, the main levees on the Mississippi River are holding. But what everyone should understand, no Mississippi River levee has been overtopped. Due south of Myrtle Grove, Grand Isle, a seven mile long barrier island cut off tonight. 75 mile per hour winds ripped off roof shingles. The storm surge cutting off an estimated 600 residents who also stayed put. When the electricity went out in Terrebonne Parish, residents rushed to the one gas station still able to pump gas to fuel home generators. But my daughter's a nervous wreck. Because? <laughs> the weather. She's scared. Tornadoes. And what are you telling her? Calm down. That's all we can do. In Morgan City, roads impassable, trees taking down phone and power lines. In Mobile, Alabama, with two inches of rain falling an hour, a flash flood warning now in effect, while in New Orleans, a surprise. So far, only isolated damage in the Big Easy. It could have been a lot worse here. Officials here in Plaquemines Parish are watching another levee on the Mississippi River that they say is showing signs of weakness. A lot of attention to this ongoing situation. Hey, NBC News fan. All righty. So, not everyone was spared. And is spared. We don't know. Barry makes landfall as a hurricane begins to up unload unload up to two feet of rain in lower Mississippi Valley. I still want to hear from you guys. What is happening? I did read a comment that just came in about the rain is beginning in Baton Rouge. So uh, I do want to hear from you. So these outer bands of whatever they're creating. Um, 
still you could get flooding in South Mississippi. Um, also want to point out Manhattan had a blackout. I don't know if this live, let's see. Breakers in a panel in your house operate, and they are very loud when they operate. That could have been it's what they heard, but I can't yet. know for sure because there were restoration attempts made as per well. Were there fires in the manholes at any point? So I did hear a report of a fire in a manhole. We'll investigate. Very unlikely that a fire in a manhole was the cause of an incident of this scale. This has happened. Okay, so a huge portion of Manhattan was blacked out tonight for hours. Uh, lights came on right in this area as he was you know, giving this live press conference. Um, let's just see. Now lights are still out in areas. So they were um, they don't know what the cause. They don't know what the cause was. It was a cool day in New York. It was not, you know, excessive overload from air conditioning. They don't know what the cause. Huh. Well, yes. You know, artificial electromagnetic frequencies. People, I don't understand why people are so refusing to even entertain you know uh, or consider or engage in even conversation about what man can do today so you've got blackouts you've got these artificially created storms yeah you know, but you're given all the information by mainstream media to know that something's very wrong like this tropical storm which originated in Georgia on land um, mainstream media is literally making a fool out of the majority of Americans it's and then it wasn't Georgia, then it was Missouri. Then they're claiming that Colorado was feeding moisture into, you know, the Gulf of Mexico. And I mean, when you listen to this reporting, isn't it shocking that you're surrounded by people who believe this horseshit? It's like, what happened to. I was going to say. You know the the intellect of the American, but I I don't think it's about intellect I, I or intelligence. It's it's whether or not you can face the truth, and I think people are really they get very frightened of the truth very often. That fear manifests as hostility or anger or immaturity um, but I think it represents to those who don't want the truth it, it's just it's gonna change their life and they don't want to change well I guess we can speculate all day long on on that particular psyche uh, that we're still surrounded by but yeah, electromagnetic frequencies can knock out power grids. New Hampshire. This is absolutely insane. I just feel right. Oh, I'm on full house. Lots of good memories there. Yeah. And so, hope this waterproof phone case is. Oh, this is disorienting. So, oh, it's very disorienting to be walking in this. What's that? Isn't that weird? See, in '82. Well, I shouldn't say New Hampshire. 
uh, only because I know New Hampshire got flooding, but I saw this. See, in 82 when it flooded. New England, New England Baptist Church. <laughs> That we're seeing this flooding all over the all over the country. Um, well, I don't know where this is. Somewhere in good old U.S. of A. It says, "Is it Valley Forge?" I don't know. Um, Arrive Valley Forge flood on the twelfth. More cars flooded out. Now, all right. Um, expect big weather changes this weekend. Talk about weather reporting. South Carolina. I got a comment from someone who said South Carolina. I think upstate South Carolina, there was flooding, there was uh, straight line winds that knocked down a lot of trees and power outages. You would think I'd be able to come up with some. The only thing that I came up with was an article uh, on a publication that it would only stay visible on my screen for about two seconds. Apparently there was half inch hail, 45 mile per hour winds, trees down, power outages, and that's all I saw. But I did more research and I couldn't come across anything. So this, uh, South Carolina. We are currently still in a very tropical and unsettled air mass. A tropical and unsettled air mass. Did I not post a video today showing you that they were they were moving air masses um, in opposite direction over one another and creating an awful lot of instability? <sighs> so a front will move from the north to the south over the Midlands. That will enhance storms and cause them to become severe there is a marginal risk of strong storms for the state of South Carolina. The whole state? Okay. Uh, here. But it says that a front will move from the north to the south over the Midlands Saturday evening. That will enhance storms and cause them to become severe. And then the next sentence is there's a marginal risk of strong storms. I, I read, I had to read the whole article. I can't figure out what, what that means. So, well, who cares? Do you really listen to your meteorologist? Um, yeah, it's rather bizarre. So, county won't pay to have storm debris hauled away. <laughs> All right. In South Carolina, Orangeburg County, Homeowners Association of the Landing Neighborhood in Orangeburg uh, County asked county council to use its workers to haul away branches and other debris. After June storms, uh, Orange County Orangeburg County Administrator Harold Young told residents the damage wasn't extensive, extensive enough to get federal help or justify having county employees haul it away. So you haul it away. <laughs> okay. Well, isn't that what, you know, we pay taxes for? Homeowners Association President Ruth Harvey says it will cost residents $300 to $400 each to have that debris hauled away. And that's hard for people on fixed incomes. The city of Orangeburg hauls away storm debris for its residents, but not you guys. Sorry. Too bad for you. Get it. Get it. Local, state, federal governments. 
that's what you're going to be seeing a lot of. The, hey, F you. You do it yourself. <laughs> um, weather on demand, making it rain, is now a global business. Welcome to the strange world of cloud seeding. We have commercial weather modification companies, and we still can't get through to people. All righty then. Well, what you going to do? I don't know. All right, you guys, in the area of Barry, stay safe. I hope nothing happens. I hope every one of you uh, remain dry. And please keep, you know, checking in in the comments section, particularly those subscribers who I know, you know, I have three that I can think of off the bat, three subscribers who have been already flooded out their homes. One I know it took about two years to finally get um, you know, through that flood and renovate the home and all of that kind of stuff. And, and now, you know, to face another one? All right, well, that doesn't make life fun at all. All links are below. Thank you guys for watching, for your support, and for supporting one another. It's really important to support one another. Good night.